molding kids' hands with alginate. Now, molding kids' hands is tricky. It's not incredibly difficult, but there's a lot of little tricks to it. And one of the first things we're going to cover for this process is the selection of a good alginate for molding hands. Now, there's several of our alginates that will work for this. These are all AccuCast brand alginates. And the AccuCast formulas are all coded by set time for the water temperature. So the first number tells you what the set time will be in minutes, and the second two digits tell you the recommended water temperature. So 270D, for instance, is two minutes at 70 degrees water temperature. And you could always speed that up with warmer water or slow it down with cooler water. But I recommend 270D for infant hands because it's very fast. So infants don't want to hold still, so that's a great one for fast hand cast. 380cc is the formula we'll use in this video, and that's a three minute working time at 80 degree water temperature. And that's ideal for most kids' hands, most uh, toddlers, even on up to adults. That's a three minute formula at 80 degrees, so it's a good general purpose uh, medium set alginate. And one of the nice things is with that color change, it goes through that color change right before it sets up. And that's a good indicator, especially where if you're working with children, that they need to get into place and hold their hands still and wait for it to gel. Now, the last of those is the 590. And the 590 is good for multiple hands all in the same hand cast. That gives you five minutes with 90 degree water temperature. And there's other formulas that you can use. We have some that are all the way up to a 10 minute working time and an eight minute working time. And those are great for also multiple hands. But the downside to those slower formulas, especially with kids, is they have to hold still for a very long time. So take that into consideration when you're working and uh, always pick a formula that works well for your subject. And it's always a good idea also when you're working with kids to do a small test mold so they can see See how alginate works before you do the critical hand cast, especially if it involves multiple hands. So now let's get started with our alginate and our mixing process. Now on average, I usually allocate about a pound of alginate per hand. Now for kids hands, you can get away with uh, about a half a pound per hand. But remember that that's always going to be relative to the size of the container you're using to make the mold. Now the mix ratio for alginate, most of our AccuCast formula alginates, I mix around one to one by volume. Now I always like to have a little bit more water on hand because if I'm molding hands, I like it to be a little bit more runny than I typically like it for a face cast or a head cast or a body cast. Now one of the crucial steps when you're mixing is you always want to put your alginate into your mixing bucket first and then pour your water on top of it. Now you'll notice I'm not using all of that water. I deliberately have more water than I need and that's just to have a little bit in reserve in case I need to thin it out a little bit, in case it winds up being a little too thick. Now remember, as soon as you put the water into your alginate, the clock starts ticking. So if you're new to this process, it's always a good idea to have a little egg timer on hand to uh, be able to count down exactly when this is going to set off. And remember that that water temperature is crucial. So when in doubt, check your water temperature because if it's warmer than 80 degrees, it will set up faster than three minutes. And now for the part that's akin to jumping a rocket cycle across Snake River Canyon. Uh, getting kids to cooperate in this stage is tricky. I've got my three and a half year old and my 10 year old together for this one. And one of the nice things here is doing a group hand cast together is the older kid can help control the little kid's hands by holding it like this. Now you'll notice here we dip their hands into the alginate, I pulled it back out, and then I massage that alginate into their hands. That's a crucial step. You'll be amazed how much a difference that makes in reducing surface bubbles. Now, one of the tricky parts here is keeping my three and a half year old occupied while that three minute set time kicks in. Now, obviously this is fast enough that uh, we don't have to wait too long, but one of the things I like to show them is how it sets up on my hands first. Notice how the alginate on my hands is turning white, and that's a good indicator that what's in the bucket is setting up. And if you're new to alginate, uh, it's that's one of the weird things with it is even when it sets up it still has this odd consistency of like a, a hard-boiled egg so the kids can have fun playing with that and that's a good distraction while you're letting that alginate get to full strength and I use the alginate on my hands as a timer when it has strength to pull that off my fingers then I'm ready to demold the kids out of the bucket there 
But you'll notice that uh, my littlest, she is all kinds of enthralled with the cured alginate. And that's good. That keeps her mind occupied until we're ready to carefully remove their little hands from the mold. Now casts like this with multiple hands are tricky to demold. You don't want to have them just yank their hands out because that will rip the alginate. So we want to very carefully work their hands out and they'll be able to tell by wiggling their fingers when it breaks that suction and allows them to slowly pull their hands out. Now we didn't cover this earlier, but mold release on kids' hands is not a big deal, but if they have dry skin and you're worried about release, it's a good idea to use a very thin layer of petroleum jelly or a hand moisturizer or some of our alginate release to make sure that their hands release and break the suction well. Now ready to clean up the top of our cast and pull away any alginate that might fall down into the mold. And one of the things when you have multiple hands together is you're going to wind up with a little chunk of alginate that I just pulled out. And that's actually the part of the alginate that was actually in their hands. And it's important to find that because it's going to be in there and you want to pull that out. Otherwise that can destroy a good cast when it bumps up against a wall and becomes trapped in the mold. So make sure you pull out any little chunks of alginate that are floating free inside the hand cast. And once you've cleaned up your mold, you're ready for casting. And in this particular case, we're going to cast hydrostone, which is a stone material, a very fine cement. And hydrostone mixes different than pottery plaster or hydrocal. It does not use the dry lake bed method. You mix it at a ratio of roughly three parts hydrostone to one part water by volume. And much like other gypsum products, that mix ratio is fairly forgiving, but uh, you want to use that as, as kind of a basis for whatever you do. Uh, too much water, you'll wind up with a mix that's a little bit more chalky and doesn't have the, uh, uh, doesn't have the strength that you need for fingers. And uh, too much hydrostone will result in a mix that's way too thick to pour and get good detail. Now here I'm measuring out three measuring cups full of hydrostone and you'll notice that I'm putting that into a container with no water. Uh, again, unlike uh, most plasters, you're not going to use that dry lake bed method. So I'm just going to measure out those three parts of hydrostone and then I'm going to measure out one part of water. And again, that ratio is pretty forgiving. So you can adjust it up or down a little bit, but you want to use that as a starting point so that you don't wind up with a weak cast later on. Now I'm mixing this by hand. I'm trying to make sure everything in this video is accessible that doesn't require special equipment. But with hydrostone, you do get a much higher quality stone if you mix this with a Jiffy mixer or uh, any kind of mechanical mixer uh, attached to a drill. Uh, you'll get a much stronger end product. Mixing it by hand, you'll find that it does take longer for that hydrostone to set completely. And the same thing goes with the alginate. You noticed earlier uh, that I had a somewhat lumpy cast, and you can eliminate a lot of that with a Jiffy mixer, but for those of us who don't have that capability on hand, you can still get great results without any special mixing equipment. And now ready to cast the hydrostone into our alginate mold. And one of the tricks here is we want to pour it in just a little bit to fill the cast, and then slosh it around and pour it back out. And the reason for that is that helps us eliminate the, the surface bubbles on the sides of our cast. By sloshing it around, it breaks that surface tension and helps us form a bubble-free cast on the sides of the mold. Now you'll also notice that as I turn that mold around and jostle it, you notice how I'm vibrating it there and bouncing it around. Hydrostone is very dense, a lot more dense than regular plaster or hydrocal. So you can use that density of the stone to your advantage by pouring a little bit in and bouncing it around a little bit. And when you do that, you'll see some of those air bubbles come up to the surface. And we really want to be careful about turning this all different directions because the we have little fingers going all kinds of different ways. And since I can't see into the mold and don't know exactly exactly what their hands were doing at the time of the mold, then some of this is pure guesswork. So we want to be careful that we turn the mold a variety of different angles and bounce it around and watch for air bubbles coming to the surface. Now I'm going to show you the most important tip of this video. Rather than wash your hands off in your sink, keep a bucket of clean water on standby. And this will save your plumbing. This will save you thousands of dollars in plumbing repairs. So Keep a, a bucket of clean water and then later on you can always just dump that out in your yard because that plaster is very eco-friendly but it is not plumbing friendly. 
Now our hydrostone, if it's mixed by hand, it's going to have a working time of probably about uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then a demold time of about two hours. So I always like to uh, very carefully break the suction on the rim of that bucket and just bounce it very gently a couple of times and the mold will slide right out. Now this is another one of those little pro tips that's real important to demolding a hand cast is using a wooden tool and be very careful about it. If you were to uh, use a steel tool at this point and be careless with it, you could ruin an otherwise perfect hand cast by uh, carving into a uh, fingertip or something. So it's important to use wooden tools and be very careful as you're demolding it. And when in doubt, remove the alginate just one chunk at a time. Now, hydrostone is pretty strong. One of the reasons we picked this particular material for casting hands is because of its strength in thin sections. So the you'll find that fingers and uh, wrists and otherwise thin areas on other casts hold up very well in hydrostone for this type of casting. But hydrostone, uh, one of the reasons we don't use it for head casts and body casts and things like that is it's not very good in uh, laying it up the way we can do with hydrocal where you can build it up in a, a half inch section all over the inside of a mold or something like that it doesn't have those working properties it is designed strictly for solid casting so that's an important consideration especially for this kind of cast where it's going to be an art cast that someone is going to probably put on display in their house it makes much more sense to use hydrostone as the end product now this is our rough cast it will take some more cleanup work to get it ready to paint but there's our rough cast in hydrostone and ready for cleanup and some paint. Now, those of you who are uh, starting out with life casting and doing kids' hands for the first time, it's super important to make sure that you always have enough uh, supplies on hand to mold their little hands several times if need be because kids can be unpredictable. And unless you're using a lot of Benadryl in conjunction with your alginate, uh, Kids can move around and ruin an otherwise perfect cast. So make sure that you have enough supplies on hand to do a cast multiple times and, and practice, practice, practice. I can't stress that enough. Uh, alginate molding is tricky. And of course, all the supplies used in this video are available on our web store at brickintheyard.com.